Good afternoon. This is Rich Ness with Open Systems Media, and I am here for this week's installment of our weekly conversations with Ray Zinn, who is an accomplished author. He is a f- former CEO, and, uh, and now I'm happy to call him my friend. How you doing, Ray? Well, Rich, my friend, I'm doing fine. Thank you for asking. Very good. Okay, so we, we started to talk last week about being acquired and, you know, the, the whole VC thing. Um, you're, you actually have a front seat to that because you were acquired. But I'm guessing that even before Microchip acquired uh, Microel, you had other offers and other suitors and things like that. So um, for the first question, what's it like when – Somebody rings your bell and they say, hey, I'd like to buy your company. I mean, you know, we had talked in previous weeks about just cashing in, but I know you were not in it just to cash out. So what is it like when somebody says, hey, I want to buy your company? It's very unnerving. Um, you know, I have told this story all, you know, for, for, for years that if I were to put a sign up in front of my building that was a half inch by half inch, uh, saying my Krell is for sale, that I still have 100 people in my lobby wanting to buy the company. Uh, so, you know, we, we didn't even like talking about it, but we did get approached a lot, um, even though, the, you know, the word out there was that my Krell is not for sale. We still had people coming wanting to buy the company. Um, in fact, um, uh, in 19, excuse me, in 2008, we were um, uh, attacked by Obram Capital, uh, as an activist fund, um, and they even used as a, one of their um, points that uh, Micro was not for sale, and they thought that was not good for uh, for the uh, investor. So they actually used that as as a as a battering ram uh, on on me, saying Raisin will never sell a company. He doesn't want to sell a company, and we don't think that's good for investors, and we need to get rid of him. So, you know, that's, it's not a, a, a good situation to be in is to have a company that, like Micro, where it's very attractive, uh, where we're a very likable uh, and suitable uh, candidate uh, for acquisition. And so that's, that's, that's been a problem for me for probably for the past 20 years. But you did sell out eventually. So what happened to change your mind? Um, I think, well, we got hit again in, in, in uh, 2014. Uh, Starboard uh, Value uh, came in as another activist. You know, I didn't think lightning could strike in the same place twice, but it did. So um, Starboard Value came in and did the same thing. They said, well, you know, here we are, you know, six years later. Let's try this again. So, you know, my board said, well, this time, you know, maybe we, we need to, to, to you know, do a, a strategic uh, alternative analysis and uh, make sure that we're we're acting in in good good faith with our investors, and so we we did go out. And once you go out and say, hey, I am for sale, then you're going to get offers that are big offers and and, and ones that are difficult to, to turn down. So uh, that that's basically what happened was is that you know Starboard came back. Uh, and uh, hit us up exactly like uh, Obram did, and my guy, we, we put an alternative uh, strategic alternatives committee together. They went out and approached a bunch of companies, and there you go. You've got a company of the quality of Mike Krell, and it doesn't take long to, to, to find somebody that wants it. So that's what did me in this time. So in general, does the board have the ability to take that out of the hands of the CEO? Does that yes. become not your decision anymore? Absolutely. Absolutely, because, you know, you're just one vote out of six. We had um, uh, six people on the board, and uh, you're, just, you're just one of those. So, uh, you know, that's, 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 you, you know, you have no more vote than they do. And uh, so it, uh, it was pretty clear to me that, uh, that if I didn't go along with it, I would be gone anyway. So we went along with it. And does it come down to the top bidder, or, or did it have to be the right fit? It has to be both. It has to be a you know, top bidder, and, or not necessarily top bidder, but it has to be the right bidder, and, and there has to be a fit. Okay. And why did you think that microchip was the right fit? Well, again, because of their technology and just the diversification of their product line, 
we thought they would be the best fit uh, for uh, uh, for my Krell. We had another number of other suitors that would have been good also, but their pricing wasn't uh, attractive, and so it was it came down to who gave us the best price that uh, had the best uh, fit for the for the company. So, you know, it, it's never a perfect fit. And one of the things that did happen that that I was surprised about and and very disappointed was is that uh, Steve Sange came in and, uh, and just uh, ripped the company apart and basically. Uh, terminated most of the people so that that was a surprise to me i didn't expect him to do it but he did was that, that naive was on your part i mean is isn't that somewhat the norm well uh i guess it is now i mean uh, at the time i was led to believe that wasn't going to happen but uh you know i guess i didn't have any control over it once i sold the company it was not under my control and i should have i guess i should have known better but uh I was led to believe that wasn't going to happen. That was one of the selling points that they made to me was that they were they were going to keep most of the people except for the executive staff. Okay. All right. Well, that's lesson learned all around. Hopefully you learned something, and hopefully our audience will learn something as well. Absolutely. I don't know that they can protect themselves. I mean, it's, it's kind of like, you know, um, wearing uh, armor piercing. I mean, you can stop some of the bullets, but you can't stop them all. So, you know, uh, they... You, you can protect yourself only so much. Very true, very true. That was Ray Zinn. He is accomplished author. He is the former CEO of Micrell. And I am Rich Nass. And uh, that was our segment this week. Thank you, Ray. Well, thanks for inviting me again, Rich. I'm enjoying these uh, segments. Very good. I am as well. <laughs>